Hi, Stu Schwartz, MasterMathMentor.com. This is video BC19. The topic is the integral test, and it covers the BC manual, pages 100 and 101. Shown on the screen is the graph of y equals 1 over x. If we look at the integral, 1 to infinity of 1 over x dx, this represents the area under the curve 1 over x from 1 to infinity. By our fundamental theorem of calculus, we know that this is equal to natural log of x evaluated from 1 to infinity, which is infinity, meaning that this integral is divergent and the area is infinite. Now let's examine the sum, n equals 1 to infinity, of 1 over n. And we will look at it from a geometric point of view. By left Riemann sums, with our base as 1, we get 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 4 plus dot dot dot, which is 1 plus a half plus a third plus a fourth. Now, since the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x is divergent, and the left-hand Riemann sum, n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n, over-approximates the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x dx, then the sum, n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n, must be divergent as well. Now, this is no great revelation. We know that the sum n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n is divergent because it is the harmonic series, which is a divergent p-series. However, you are just given that rule. This is a geometric proof using integrals. Now let's look at the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared dx we see the area under the curve, and we realize that this will be negative 1 over x evaluated by from 1 to infinity by the fundamental theorem of calculus, which is 0 minus negative 1, which is 1. So this integral converges. Now let's look at summation n equals 2 to infinity of 1 over n squared. By a right Riemann sum argument, this is 1 times 1 over 2 squared plus 1 times 1 over 3 squared plus 1 times 1 over 4 squared, which is 1 fourth plus 1 ninth plus 1 sixteenth plus dot dot dot. Now since we know that the integral from 2 to infinity of 1 over x squared dx is convergent, as we just showed, and the right Riemann sum for summation, n equals 2 to infinity of 1 over n squared will under-approximate the integral from 2 to infinity of 1 over x squared dx. Then it follows that the summation n equals 2 to infinity of 1 over n squared must be convergent as well, as will be summation n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared. Now this is no great revelation. We know that summation n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared is convergent because it is a p-series with p is equal to 2. However, rather than following some rule that you were given, you now have a geometric proof using integration that shows that summation n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared is convergent. So we now have a new test called the Integral Convergence Test. It says, if f is a function that is positive, continuous, and decreasing for x greater than or equal to 1, and a sub n equals f of n, then either summation n equals 1 to infinity of a sub n, and the integral from 1 to infinity of f of x dx, both converge or both diverge. The series and the integral both do the same thing. 
So if the integral converges, the series converges. If the integral diverges, then the series diverges. Suppose you were asked whether the summation n equals 1 to infinity of n squared times e to the negative 2n converges. Your first step would be the nth term test, and you look at n squared over e to the 2n. The limit of that expression as n approaches infinity, which is equal to 0. But all that tells you is that the series could converge. It isn't telescoping. It is in the form of, of a geometric or p-series. So what do you do? So we check out whether the integral from 1 to infinity of x squared e to the negative 2x dx converges. If it does, then our series will converge. This does not mean, though, that this will necessarily be easy. Many integrals cannot be taken. And even if they can be, they may involve a bit of work. So the integral test is not always helpful. But if we can integrate the expression, then it is a relatively simple thing to determine convergence. We would like to determine the convergence or divergence of the series summation n equals 1 to infinity of 2n over n squared plus 1 and summation n equals 1 to infinity of 2 over n squared plus 1. Note that both pass the nth term test in that their limits as n approaches infinity is equal to 0. But all that does is tell us that they could converge, not that they do. While not necessary to graph, the graph of the functions 2 over x squared plus 1 and 2x over x squared plus 1 is further confirmation that the series could converge as both graphs are asymptotic to the x-axis. We first look at summation n equals 1 to infinity of 2n over n squared plus 1, which is 1 plus 4 fifths plus 6 tenths plus 8 seventeenths plus dot dot dot. Using the nth term test, we confirm formally that this could converge as the limit as n approaches infinity of 2n over n squared plus 1 is equal to 0. We now apply the integral test, looking at the integral from 1 to infinity of 2x over x squared plus 1 dx, which is the natural log of the absolute value of x squared plus 1 evaluated from 1 to infinity, which is equal to infinity. So the improper integral of 1 to infinity of 2x over x squared plus 1 dx diverges, and therefore the series summation n equals 1 to infinity of 2n over n squared plus 1 is also divergent. We now look at summation n equals 1 to infinity of 2 over n squared plus 1. This is 1 plus 2 fifths plus 2 tenths plus 2 seventeenths plus dot dot dot. Again, the nth term test confirms that this could converge as the limit of 2 over n squared plus 1 as n approaches infinity is equal to 0. So we look at the integral from 1 to infinity of 2 over x squared plus 1 dx, and this is 2 inverse tangent of x evaluated from 1 to infinity, which is 2 quantity pi over 2 minus pi over 4, and that is equal to pi over 2. And since the improper integral converges, so does the series summation n equals 1 to infinity of 2 over n squared plus 1. It is convergent as well. Remember that this does not say that the series converges to pi over 2. The fact that the integral converges to pi over 2 tells us that the series converges 
but it does not tell us what it converges to. In problems two through four, you are given the terms of the series, and in order to analyze it, you're going to have to write it in a series notation format. 2 reads 1 plus 1 over e plus 1 over e squared plus 1 over e cubed plus dot dot dot. This can be written as summation n equals 0 to infinity of 1 over e to the n. And it is apparent if we graph the f function y equals 1 over e to the x that this will pass the nth term test and could, could converge. Summation n equals 0 to infinity of 1 over e to the n is a geometric series with r equaling 1 over e, which is less than 1. And therefore, we know it's convergent. However, we could, if we wanted to, use the integral test. There are more than one test that will frequently work. If we look at 1 plus 1 over e plus 1 over e squared plus 1 over e cubed, the terms are positive and decreasing. So if we look at the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x dx, this is negative e to the negative x evaluated from 0 to infinity, which is negative 1 over e to the infinity plus 1 over e to the 0, which is 1. And since the integral 0 to infinity of e to the negative x dx converges, so does the series summation n equals 0 to infinity of 1 over e to the n as well. Obviously, this problem is much easier done by recognizing it as a geometric series. 3 reads 1 over 2 natural log 2 plus 1 over 3 natural log 3 plus 1 over 4 natural log 4 plus dot dot dot. This can be written as summation n equals 2 to infinity of 1 over n natural log n. And again, as we look at the graph of y equals 1 over x natural log of x, it is clear that it's becoming asymptotic to the x-axis, and therefore it could converge. Unlike number 2, which was a geometric series, this series does not fall into any such category. And right now, our only hope is the integral test. The terms, 1 over n natural log of n, has the terms positive and decreasing. So we look now at the integral 2 to infinity of 1 over x natural log of x dx, which turns out to be the natural log of the natural log of the absolute value of x, evaluated from 2 to infinity. And this is infinity. So since the integral 2 to infinity of 1 over x natural log x dx diverges, then the series summation n equals 2 to infinity of 1 over n natural log of n will diverge as well. With number 4, we'd like to find whether the summation n equals 0 to infinity of n e to the negative n squared power is convergent or divergent. It is always a good idea to write out the first few terms of a series to get a feel for it. Summation n equals 0 to infinity of n e to the n squared is 0 plus 1 over e plus 2 over e to the fourth plus 3 over e to the ninth plus 4 over e to the sixteenth plus dot dot dot. When we graph the expression y equals x e to the negative x squared, we see that it is asymptotic to the x-axis, telling us by the nth term test that this expression could converge. Technically speaking, we cannot use the integral test because our terms are not strictly decreasing. We start at 0, we go to 1 over e, but then we go down to 2 over e to the fourth. However, if you do some derivative work, we could show that the expression f of x equals x e to the negative x squared hits its maximum at x is equal to 1 over the square root of 2, and then will decrease forever. 
and that tells us that the interval test can be used. Technically speaking, we are starting at 1 and going to infinity, and if we wanted to, we could then add on the zero term, which would be finite. So with u substitution, the integral from 0 to infinity of x e to the negative x squared dx is negative 1 half e to the negative x squared evaluated from 0 to infinity, which is negative 1 over 2 e to the infinity plus 1 over 2 e to the 0, which is 1 half. And since the integral from 0 to infinity of x e to the negative x squared dx is convergent, then the series summation n equals 0 to infinity of n e to the negative n squared is convergent as well. Remember again that this does not necessarily converge to 1 half. The 1 half merely indicates that this is a convergent series. A couple of final points. First, you might be wondering why we even care about convergence. What does it mean in a real-life sense? This will be explained several videos down the road. Second, the integral test is not your go-to test. The geometric series and p-series tests give the results at a glance, and we will find that tests developed over the next several videos are far more efficient than the integral test. But it is one more test in your arsenal, even though it's probably one of the last tests you should actually try.